Kevin Ellip here from Artisound.University. You guys, please check out the website, Artisound.University. There's course available, courses available there for you. Um, I'll put together and prepare for, for you guys breaking down some of these things, tips and tricks that, I, that I've learned over the years. And I uh, want you to take advantage of that. So um, in this particular video, uh, it might be rather long because I wanted to show you guys uh, some things that, um, that, I, that I was doing. I, I went ahead and, and did another song here. And um, this is uh, the machine, the, the version 2.5.6. So um, in this version, I'm going to show you some things that, um, that, um, that took place in... Uh, in regards to the update, it, it, it actually it kind of changed the workflow on some things that that um, that we were used to doing. They kind of moved some things around. Like for instance, um, I know that when uh, I know um, I told you guys about this before, but when you are in scenes, they they deleted the all button because now it's the uh, the shift loop or shift restart button, um, and and that acts activates the the loop on and off function right i hope you guys can see um my screen or the um the machine um, video uh capture here because um i try to try to you know make it so that you guys can see it a whole lot better or whatever um some of the things may still be small but uh you know just bear with me follow follow with me um so when i was doing this song here i've noticed something else that uh that got moved and uh i was just like wait you know what's what's going on so um in sing <laughs> pretty much in sing sing just got the sing button just got moved all around it's just it's just a lot of stuff going on so basically um when i duplicated one of my scenes i was looking to like rearrange it you know to to wherever you know I wanted to duplicate my intro and then um, kind of move it like next to the verse because I wanted the song to actually break out, you know, do like a, uh, like, I don't know, like, go, like give me that, that intro feel again before I go to the chorus. And usually what I would do is, is uh, I'll turn this knob as a matter of fact and kind of rearrange it. It was, it was either this knob or this knob, one, one of the two. And I'm like, I'm just, you know, I'm just sitting here puzzled, like, man, what the heck is going on? Like, what, where did, it, what did they do? Why did they delete that? So then something told me just to go to the range, and it makes sense. It makes sense that they, uh, that they actually uh, move that function in the range. So when you need to arrange stuff, so if I need to uh, rearrange a scene, I could basically come here and you know change the the scene position, as you can see. It says scene position. The, the, the scene position was in the scene tab. You know, it was here in this page, but they moved it to a range. Makes sense. Cool. You know, just got to get used to it because I'm used to doing it, you know, in, in the scene. But um, anyway, let me show you this song and I'll kind of explain uh, what I did as, as we go along. So I was listening to something and um, I got inspired. I'm like, wait, let me let me do something similar to that. And um, so here we go. So what I try to do is, as you can see on the screen, on, on the screen is uh, labeling everything. It, it makes sense because when you get to doing stuff like this, full songs, reading pattern one, pattern two, scene one, scene five, scene seven, that gets annoying after a while. So you want to try to label everything what i did was to avoid like stopping the workflow process i um i just labeled everything after the fact but i'm still working on the song here i have to do more so i'm you know kind of show you guys what i got going on
All right, so the voices is coming from Excel, right? Um, and then I have uh, a tubular bell in here. That's something different, right? Or something different from me. Never did that before. So what I had to do was actually search for that because I don't remember exactly what that was. But basically, um, I say majority of the kit was actually built from the 2.5 update. They have all they did they did uh they added some sounds in here. So if you guys have a machine of any model, it doesn't matter. The software itself was um was updated with uh different, you know, more more samples. So um basically if we go to uh samples here or on your screen here, you know, I can go here and browse and um in my in my samples I I'm able to like put my hand over this button uh you have to you know hover well i guess it's not that's not the way to do it um but anyway i have to okay i have to be in machine machine is is where all of the updates are so now when i um when i come here i have to hover my hand over where it says all banks then go to 2.5 so it's 2.0 library and then it's 2.5 here if you're on the screen doing it um um, the best way to do it is um, is actually you go to uh, you have to click here and then go to machine here and then uh, click this uh, this down arrow here and then switch it to 2.5. So I just showed you two ways of doing it. So that's how you get to the uh, all of the updates and sounds that that were uh, imported in the 2.5 here. And um, so they have several um, kits and things. So this is, you know, if, if you click here, you kind of break things down. And in, in um, category wise, I have inserted the word bells. That's why nothing was coming up at first. Um, so keep in mind, if you if you search it for anything, um, is you know, it's just, it's just gonna keep keep that that you know in the search and you know if you switch anything is you're not going to really see anything pop up because it's still searching for whatever you put there so um so um make sure you have that empty um good thing also the good thing about this is uh you guys remember when they when they inserted the uh the uh, ability to make favorites to things now you know you can just hit the um the favorite button i haven't made any favorites in here um, actually, I did. Um, I just had to come out all the way out. I made a favor to one kick. Okay, um, so um, you know, if you guys make favorites, if you if you're fra favorite favorite, how do you say that? If you are favoring <laughs> more than one thing, everything will come up, will pop up in this list, or on you know, as you can see on the machine, you will see a, a list of things. Um, if I was to come out of the 2.5 i'm sure more things pop up but i'm usually not in the machine i'm all i'm all over the place i'm like in all of the other libraries like i like a lot of the stuff that i'm using is probably more so in um like uh electric vice or little like glare or lucid mission or laser dice these are the several kits that is on the market with uh, native native instruments .com, um or even drop squad drop drop squad um so i made favorites several favorites in you know other sections of things i don't have many favorites it's just you know something that stick out to me and something i know i'm going to use quite often wait i just passed up something i have quite a few favorites um also this is my overall so these are all of my favorites, which is pretty cool. So you just, you know, when you hit that button up here, this is, uh, or you can hit it here. Um, you see all your favorites or whatever. And to make favorites, you have to hit shift. So you say you want to make this, just, just kick uh, a favorite. I like that kick too. You just hit shift and set fave or if you're doing it from your computer you just go here to the side of it and, and hit the um the star button which would make it a favorite all right so basically um what i did was um most of everything like i was saying is pulled from the 2.5 stuff so 
um, let's say my drums, everything here is pulled from. So if I was to go here to scenes, chorus, I'm going to turn on the loop so we can hear what's going on. Right? Yep. So everything here is built from the 2.5, which is pretty cool. You know, I like what they did. Like, there's some really nice stuff in there. And um, so let's let's find, okay, we're going to go to pad mode here and just, okay, for instance, this kick. I can go to... Uh, um, this little this little um, um, search icon here or uh, magnifying glass or whatever and just hit just hit it and it actually find the actual sound that I use so it's the kick uh, kick Ruth block I believe that's what it is kick the kick run the run the block oh okay I'm <laughs> I don't know I don't know what's going on with my eyeballs but uh yeah, run the block. I believe that's that's what that's what that's how you pronounce it. So um let's turn up my cue here. And what I thought was pretty cool with this was somehow I'm not sure how they did it. I have to figure it out. But usually, like if it's a sample, usually what I would have to do is go to the the um the pitch gate window here right and then my type i usually have to turn that on to uh adsr to control or or 80 or hd um to control the length or um you know things like that the length of it um you know i know what they did because um they actually this is what they did um so if i go to keyboard mode It's not an overlaps, right? Now I'm thinking about it. Because, you know, usually when you pick up a sample, it's overlapping. And so what you have to do is uh, set a cutoff so that it won't overlap. And that's usually what I'm doing. As you guys know, this is the drum synthesis here or, or the sampling. You can make adjustments and do whatever you need to do inside here. You can, you know, add saturation to 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 any of this stuff um you can drive it more you can play around with the tuning you can even cut it off make it shorter add other filters here um yeah so this is this is this is this is really cool this was always here you know i, I can i could always come here and, and make adjustments but maybe there's something in the background that they did that i didn't quite put my, my finger on yet so but anyway so this whole kit is coming from um 2.2.5 guys you know what i'm saying and so um also there there was some updates to massive here so if i was to um, get out of this mode and visit the um, the section where the massive is. Um, like I say, or like I like I've said before um, in all of my other videos, it really pays to just label everything. That's just, that's a huge thing. Um, so anyway, um, I'm gonna show you the massive. What I wanted to show you guys, like, so this is the. Uh, the uh the modeler and and i don't know if you can see that but i have like um uh, there's a reverb that came on the um the massive already well i believe there's a reverb in there and i had to adjust that reverb um i added another reverb i had to you know do some adjustments or whatever to get it to sound the way i want it and then i add a supercharger gt to make it um uh, make it pop harder and basically Let's go to scene one. 
to make it pluck hard like that because it wasn't doing that originally i had to add uh, a compressor and, and it was the supercharger here that i added to make it do you know and i had to play around with the the, the settings and, and whatnot so So, um, so that's massive. Um, let me show you guys that. So if you are in, I believe it's instruments again, um, you have to search for massive and, um, then you have to go to, um, the 2.5. You have to actually find it. Uh, Right here, machine 2.5 library. And I'd even, yeah, the mover. I even managed to to star this or favorite it because I actually, I actually like this sound. So um, these are other sounds that, that you can, you know, mess around with or whatnot. Maybe I can show you guys something right quick. I'm going to go to an empty, empty track here. And... Wow, maybe I could have used that. It's pretty cool stuff here. I'm getting other ideas. You know what I'm saying? And then you guys already know that they uh, implemented the the scale in uh, in chords, right? So like coming up with stuff, learning like you don't even have to really fully understand progression. I've gotten that question a few times, like man, can you teach on like progression or melody and stuff like that? Um, Maybe I can do that and just use machine as as a tool because I feel like they do it very well. Oh yeah. Let's um favor that now. I have an idea for that one. That one's dope. <laughs> you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm getting too excited. Let me turn down my cue. Everything is coming in. Okay, never mind. Turn down my sound. Um, so my cue is really for like um, pre here, like and, and really that's only for sounds when you are no actually in the in the sample area because everything is driven by samples or wave wave files or whatever or whatnot, and so the cue kind of works for that, and, and it also has to do with the the metronome. You actually had to go to grid, and what I did was I hit shift, grid mode, and this is how you turn up and down your metronome. So if it's too loud for you, this is how you really do it. That's the correct way. Um, but a lot of times, I'll just go, like, quickly go to my cue and just turn it down. So, like, if I'm, you know, to me, you know, you know what I'm saying? But just just to just to make it clear, this is, this actually also controls anything that's coming out of your browser if you're in the sample area. So I just you know don't want you guys thinking that that's really how you control the the volume of the metronome. Um, so so basically, um, yeah, that's 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 dope. Like you know, um, I'm not really sure what they've done to any other um, anything else. But I believe it's like um, it's the uh, I have to look on a website. But these this is just stuff I've noticed, like just trying to create this track. And so like right quick, I'm just kind of going through, um, you know, some some things I found out. So um, anyway, moving along, what I've uh, let's I guess I can just delete this here, delete this track all together or this pattern. Um getting distracted because I, I want to create another song just based on some of the stuff I've just listened to and that's the beauty of being uh, a music producer you get to just do whatever you want to do and 
you know, not be controlled by, but, you know, there are some rules, though, um, especially if you're working for clients, um, they, they, they have specific tastes and things that they're looking for. So, I mean, obviously there's rules to uh, creating if you're working with, you know, companies and different things like that. But um, basically, um, so just to, just to kind of give you a tour, I use the, um, the RC48. My C bank is actually um, my, let's turn off this, this uh, solo here. My C bank is my effects, where, I'm, where I put my effects here. I know I'm all over the place. I'm just excited. Uh, so I have RC48 here. And then I have a uh, guitar rig here that's uh, representing um, something else here. Um, I can't remember. So if I go to browse, I can actually try to find it. Uh, it's a reflector. I don't think I use, I don't think I bust anything to it. But basically, um, the cool thing about this is that um, this is how I've been doing stuff forever, um, depending on how I feel. But like a lot of times, like it's, this is just the same. This is like the you know the same process of um, uh, of having a a a bus channel or auxiliary channel to bus whatever sounds to that specific channel. So instead of putting a a uh, reverb on each sound that I want to have reverb or whatever the case might be, I just created a bus channel here. So this would be my my bus channel, and so. Um, so for my, let's say, this is actually a filter. I put a filter on this. It's a, it's a filter on this entire group. I put like a, a, a EQ on the entire group here. So like, I guess if you think about it, like, um, for me, like studio one is what I use as my dog of choice is what I use to, to do everything, mix, master and that type of stuff. Um, if you pack a folder of sounds and um, put an effect on that, that's kind of where, you know, what what this would be like. You know, I this everything is in this group, and I just put something on top of it. So, and it's really I put a, um, a EQ, if, and I can kind of show you guys that on the screen. So there's an EQ here um, that I put at the end, and kind of like you know you know put in fact there's some other stuff on here but that's not important um but uh moving to the um um the sounds let's go to my drums which is i believe is d yeah so d is um where my drums are let's get out of keyboard mode like this here this particular sound i actually bust um, I sent a little bit of it to my my reverb, which is C, and it would be C15. And the way you do that is um, you obviously have to be, you know, have that sound. And then you click over to channel here, up here at the top. If you have an MK1 or 2, I can't remember. Let me look over to my, my MK1 here. I'm trying to remember like exactly um what it would be for you guys oh it's the same thing it's exactly the same thing so um i still have it uh it would be like control so you go shift control um no i don't think you have to hit shift control i think you just hit this either or this is what it's supposed to do it's supposed to change and uh, the whole idea is to get to the channel so that you can adjust or, um, you know, um, so right here it says audio. You don't want to mess with that. So I'm going to toggle over to where it says aux, right? And then and then what you do is um, you change the auxiliary to, okay, so let me, let me find that, that track again. Let's go back. The sound I actually sent to the reverb is uh my vocal here this is what i sent to, to the reverb to give me that the ambient wide sound or whatever and so um it's uh i sent it to c1 right and 
I you know, you can control how much you send, which is the levels here. So you guys can see the actual plugin on the screen, but if I come out, you can kind of see the um the actual um the knob and and where it was sent to. So it was sent to C1, okay? And if I put my hand over it, you can kind of see I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but um, um, it's telling me where I sent it to, which is reverb filters, because that's what I renamed it to. And yeah, so this so so that's pretty much you know how you will you know you can bust and use just uh, one pad to actually you know represent a, a filter versus versus a a, uh, a sound you know or or adding a a filter to each individual sound that you want you know to do certain things to or you can just add it to the group level like if you just want to compress the whole group everything in that group so i mean it's a good idea just to have like um like everything that's you know relative instruments in the same group so like drums for instance you want all your drums in one group or if you um have more than 16 pads worth drums then you know obviously you'll go to another group but then um you know you gotta do what you gotta do you know what i mean but um what i try to do is have all of my keyboard stuff together all of my bass well i'll put the bass and the keyboard piano stuff together um, depending on what I'm doing, if the bass is doing something really crazy and I know I'm going to use more than one bass and you know what I mean, then I'll have like a bass group for that or like an effect group for that. Because sometimes when you want to do stuff like, you know, compression, for instance, you want to you want to have everything already grouped off or whatever. So, um, you know, to avoid putting, you know, plugins on each thing because you gotta also pay attention to this thing up here there's a, a little little button up here called cpu and it will spike up after a while so um i would say if, if anything and you know use a machine you want to be very cautious and very you know work very smart in that regard so and this is one of the ways that i feel like is working very smart all right um so um, so what I did was, um, um, there was something else I wanted to show you guys, um, which, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, let's see. This is something that you can also do. Like if I like the loop here, if, if I hit shift loop and then use my cursor, I can actually move the loop to wherever I want to, which is really cool. I didn't know you can do that. I was just playing around on, on the fly and discovered that. Ain't that something? All right. All right, so that's pretty cool. Um, to to uh, make the length bigger, like the loop size, I would say right now you just have to go to your screen and, and make it make it bigger like this more like your linear way of of working even though these are scenes and patterns um but this is actually pretty cool i seen a guy do this he showed this this is pretty cool because if you have something that you're doing and it requires like like at the end of a pattern or something like that into a next the next scene and you need to like repeat that multiple times this would be really dope this is a really dope way and like your patterns actually bleeds over into the next pattern or the next scene which is pretty dope um before it was i think it did that before but it didn't really didn't really work well i i, I will say this will work more so for like things that to have a tail ending or something like that um note wise i don't think that it will lap so if i have a note here and um i'm in paint mode obviously so let's get out of paint 
switch over. So if I have a note, you know what I mean? Let's paint that, I guess. Okay. Let's paint it. I'm gonna go back to this tool. We're gonna to extend it. So if you if you got something going on like that, I don't think it'll work like that. You will experience some type of glitch or something. I know I've done. I've experienced a glitch every time I try to to uh, execute that. Um, so I I just you know stay away from that. You know and just just shorten your notes here and just you know just make it stop right there. You know, so. You know what I mean? That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I didn't know you can do that. But that's that's pretty cool. So um, let's go back to the uh, the scene level here. And, and now I'm looking at the scene, and, and, and they actually have both of these selected, which is pretty, pretty cool. That's that's cool. All right, so. So with the hi-hat here, what I did was I put an effect on on this as well I believe it was an EQ let's switch over no it, I didn't put effect on it sorry it was the pitch so if I hold down on the key or on the on the pad here and I move my toggle here you can access the different things around your your toggle or edit section here it will it will highlight you can you can see that and then and, and then once you get this to light up like this you got to be holding down your pad you can actually switch so if you was one of those people trying to access the swing this is how you do it you know you go between you know whatever you need which is also pretty cool um so um as you can see uh i made an I made an I really didn't make adjustments to the um the um the pitch here. It was another it was this here. This is the hat that I made adjustments to and I decreased the pitch down by two two decibels, I wanna say, by two points, negative two points. And all I did was hit here and access this here and went to my tune and that's how you you know, as you can see me scrolling. Okay, so I was looking for an easy way to just highlight all of them and um, duplicate them, you know, on the back end of this here where I stopped before. But um, I guess I had to do it the old-fashioned way and just um, hold down my Alt or Option key and take one and drag it over. Or I could do like this. Which will like at at some point it will kind of get confusing, cause I could go here and say duplicate this here. I'm in my range window here, say duplicate that, and then go to my okay my position here and just move it all the way to the end. And so I'm have to continue doing that. And it pays, like I said before, to have everything labeled. Okay, so now I know I have the break all the way down there again. So now I need to come back to the chorus and duplicate that. And then reposition that all the way to the end. And then um, let's uh, make this smaller here. All right. So we can see everything. All right, so that's my chorus, and then I need to get to this other chorus here with the VOs, and then I'm going to go here and duplicate that and then reposition that all the way to the end. So that's one of those things where um, I feel like Native Instruments is 
uh, approaching next in the update because they're going to make it easy to to um arrange everything they they've already you know kind of started making sense of you know like i told you guys in the beginning of this video where the um you know that function we just performed just now the um duplicating and then being able to position everything they uh, move that to the range window and so i feel like that's something that that they you know at a later date and also what's cool about this is um the unique button is always available on those things that you duplicated until you actually hit the unique button once you hit the unique button it, it grays out is no longer available because you've already made the, the scene unique right so right now what we did was i just copied um duplicated and you know pretty much copied over the same thing because it's going to repeat but obviously i'm going to make some changes because i don't want it to get too boring so on the the patterns or or scene that i don't want to do anything to i'm just going to leave as is and then when i get to the, the you know the point where i want to actually change something i'll just hit the unique button so it's pretty that's pretty cool so i'm gonna hit um And I think after that, I want to duplicate this again and let's rearrange that all the way to the end and, and I'm going to actually make that unique. I have to go to my scenes and make that unique. No, that's the wrong one. I didn't want to. Okay, so let's go to this one here, make that unique, and probably going to delete that, um, delete that, and delete that. So now... Right. And um, this is something I thought was pretty cool. This, this this wasn't always here, but in 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 one of those updates, we can see the time. You know, there was a point where we couldn't see the time. I've been with machine for a long time. So I'm just, you know, kind of like just appreciating all of the things that they've done. Each update has been something pretty cool. Um, um, the other thing is um, like, uh, let me see. I'm noticing this link button here. I think this link button works for the the uh the jam um linking two devices together. The jam or me maybe maybe the tractor or you know, I don't know. I think it's just like linking stuff together so it, so that it that can work really well. Um before I go, one of the things you want to make sure that you do is um in your preference area you want to make sure that you that you um you pay attention to some of the things in the background because they made changes there as well so where seeing is to take advantage of the duplicate option here um it may say seen only by default but if you change it to scenes and pattern pattern this is what allows and then um you know click the this button here this is what allows for those actions that i just performed for you guys to be um active um you know when you duplicate and, that, and i think that's a beautiful way to work a beautiful workflow um to be able to have that function where where you could duplicate your scenes and then your patterns follow and just make it easy 
for you you know i think that's pretty cool but i mean if you don't want to that's just totally up to you and um a few other things um not nothing i see stuck out um obviously i really don't know if this works this this is this is a section here that says usage data tracking um i have my checked on because I'm one of those ones that I, you know, I like to to be able to help anybody in any chance that I get. So if I experience a crash or something not working, this is being sent to them. You know, I don't think that your credit card details or your personal information, your address, I mean, <laughs> they already have that anyway. So, I mean, it's not like, you know, if you think about it, it's not like, you know, you really putting your life out there, you know, like some people do on Facebook. But, I mean, they already got your information. Uh, you know, this is teach his own, you know, read, read. You know, there is a link here where you can read uh, more more information about this. But basically, this is like anything else. You know, you have the option to turn this on or off. It actually sends uh, native instruments, you know, the, the, um, the performance of your system and, and what it's doing to help them create a better situation um, and fix bugs and, you know, different things like that. So, because uh, a lot of times we don't make, we are not reaching out to them, you know, about certain things. And so this is how they, you know, keep abroad everything, which is pretty cool. Um, that's pretty much, that's pretty much all that I've noticed um, in the audio section. I kind of noticed that this changed a little bit, though, just the way it looked. Um, but this is pretty much standard. You know, it looks like normal or whatever. Like, I, I get it. I understand. You know, you have, uh, you know, your buffer size here. I'll leave it at 512. It's not, it's not bothering me. That's fine. Um, 48. Um. 48 uh, samples here. That's cool. You know, all the way up to 192. Um, and I'm thinking that's because my interface supports 192. Or maybe Native Instruments really support that. Or I don't know. I am i don't know. Maybe I think this is probably it has a lot to do with, with, um, your system itself. So say, for instance, I was to change this. Yeah, that has to do with the, so if your device handles 192, then it, it will pop up. Yeah, so that's what that's for. Cool. Other than that, everything else is pretty much the same. And um, I appreciate you guys for taking the time out to listen and watch my, my video. Um, I was trying to show you guys my song, and I ended up doing a tutorial anyway, showing you guys stuff that I thought was, was pretty cool and helpful. It's been great. Again, make sure that you visit the website, artofsound.university, and check out some of the courses I have there. Look, I'm always building and 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 learning and and you know trying to do new things so the site you know once you guys subscribe to the site buy a course there will always be new courses available i'm always working on something this is what i do for a living so if you if you hang in there with me like some of you guys have been so far you stick around you know what i mean i promise you guys there will be fresh content always coming out because I'm one of those type that likes to learn and and try to keep up with everything and new things and exciting things. And um, that's just how my courses will, um, you know, how they flow. And, um, you know, so as I learn things, you know, and, and you know what I mean? I, I don't have any problem with sharing it with you guys um, because I like to, I like to see people grow and um, prosper. That's where I get my my ambition from. I, I get motivated seeing people grow 
Um, especially if it's something I, I I was able to help and and you know and and push you guys and motivate you guys. So that's always the goal here at uh K Sound here. Um ASU baby, art of sound, music is art, you're the artist, paint your picture, I'm out of here. Till next time. All right, okay, I'm gonna stop talking. All right, see y'all later.